Blood centers issuing a plea to donors. It is low on O negative and type B blood. When supply gets low, eligible donors are the only ones who can help. Local 12's Kristen Cornett explains the local effort to add more people to that list. Good morning. So right now, if gay, mom, gay men excuse me, want to donate blood, they have a very specific set of rules to follow. And you'll actually see these cards behind me at Hawksworth Blood Center. And they're at a, the center of a local effort to change that. And as I found out, it could happen soon enough. Three months abstinent. That's the rule gay men have to follow if they want to donate blood. The FDA updated these guidelines in 2020 when the world was facing uncertainty. It was because we were facing COVID-19 and we were really concerned that we would have enough blood out there. Now advocates in the blood community think it's time to take it one step further. Hawksworth Blood Center has these cards at donation centers. It's an ongoing effort to petition the FDA to change its guidelines to an approach that could be less discriminatory. What's happening right now is that there's a big movement to be able to ask different questions uh, that would accomplish the same thing in terms of reducing the people who have HIV who present to donate. It comes down to risk and testing. Right now, the risk of transfusion transmission of HIV or hepatitis is about one in two million units. So extremely low, uh, and that's largely due to the safety of the testing that we have. Um, there, the main concern is this window period. Uh, so there's about 10 days between the time of donation and the time that the test will actually detect it an active infection. We asked the FDA for an interview to discuss local advocacy efforts. They declined, but a spokesperson provided a statement saying in short, we are considering the possibility of pursuing alternative strategies that maintain blood safety. In December 2020, the FDA launched what's known as the advanced study. The goal to see if it's possible to change the deferral process from the time-based one it is now to one based on individual risk, something the UK has been doing for nearly a year now to make the process more inclusive. I think that um, anytime you know we can open our doors to another uh, segment of the population or a part of the population, uh, we're very uh, open to that, uh, especially if it's in a safe, uh, in a safe way. So this advanced study will study 2,000 gay men in eight different cities and is underway right now in the U.S. And it's really going to examine if risk assessment process, something more like that, like asking specific questions about sexual activity, could be more effective at finding more donors. And results are actually expected later on this year. Then they're going to be submitted to the FDA for review. And then from there, they will decide the next steps. Sheila. Thanks a lot, Kristen. The Red Cross is one of three blood organizations involved in that study, and we asked for a comment, but we're told they're not doing interviews about that right now. You can read the full statement from the Red Cross on local12.com.